Welcome to Grading 103. We're going to be talking today about counterfeit detection of nickel and silver coins. This is brought to you by the Professional Coin Grading Service as part of our educational program. We'll go over a few of the uh, techniques here real quickly. We did this in uh, the part one, but I'll run through them very quickly. Keep in mind counterfeit detection is enormously complex and detailed, and we're going to be talking about two major types of counterfeit coins. The first is struck or cast counterfeits, where the entire coin is fake. In other words, no part was ever real. And the second type is altered coins, which start with a genuine coin, and then the um, thief makes uh, changes, usually, of course, to the date, uh, the mint mark, or a diagnostic of some sort to create something that's rarer, you know, adding a mint mark or changing a date. For most struck counterfeits, uh, there's a number of different dies exist, which makes it a little bit uh, difficult because there's not always one bad counterfeit die. And of course, the types of alterations that have been done to dates and mint marks are numerous. Um, you can start with, you know, many different dates or many different ways of uh, adding a mint mark to a coin. So this all uh, makes the life of the counterfeit detector very difficult. This course will not enable you to distinguish every counterfeit coin you might encounter, but hopefully it'll give you some familiarity with how the experts at PCGS determine authenticity, some of the techniques they use and some of the styles that uh, the counterfeiters use. We'll start with a, a 1916 double die buffalo nickel. And the thing to keep in mind on this is that you have doubling on both the date and the feathers. You see sort of the double line of feather up here, and many times the counterfeiters overlook this. So while they may try to uh, create a double date, uh, remember, uh, you want to look for a double feather as well. Also on this upper feather you see in the upper left corner, you see a little bit of doubling. Here's a rare coin. This is the famous 1918 over 17 D Buffalo nickel. This is a genuine example, and uh, we'll point out a couple diagnostics. Uh, in the date area, most have a heavy die crack from the hair uh, just above the braid. You can see this die crack right here is uh, very easy to see. Here's a counterfeit coin. Of course, it's going to be missing that die break. And um, also, you'll see how poorly done the overdate was. It looks very different than the uh, real overdate. And uh, this should be a dead giveaway on a coin like this. Here's the famous 1937D three-legged nickel. Of course, the leg that's missing is the front leg here. You see it's uh, totally smooth. It had been buffed off. But what we look for is, well, we take a look at that back leg. You see how rough and uh, moth-eaten that back leg looks. That's a diagnostic of a uh, genuine uh, three-legged nickel. You also see this leg here. Uh, this was all done to, due to excessive dye polishing, so these back legs suffered as well as that front leg. You also want to take a look at the back of the Indian's neck on a genuine example. You'll see uh, some roughness on there. Both of these are important diagnostics. Here's a counterfeit coin where someone has simply buffed off the uh, leg, and uh, you'll be able to see that front leg was removed, but the back legs uh, look fine. There's no moth-eaten appearance, very strong leg right here. And this is uh, very, very plainly a counterfeit because the real ones all have those uh, moth-eaten uh, back legs. Here's an early coin. This is a 1795 half dime. And uh, sometimes these can be difficult to tell. These were rather crudely struck even by the mint. So the cruder the coin, the easier it is to copy, of course. But uh, we, we want to take a close look at that date. You see it's a very sharply cut date and the surfaces of the coin are quite smooth. Uh, that's uh, characteristic of a genuine example. Here's a counterfeit. This is a struck counterfeit, and once again you can see the roughness and pebbly look of the surface. The eagle on the back looks very crude, but let's take a close look at that date area here. You see sort of the roughness and the depressions all over the coin. You see the raised areas here. You see just sort of the poor execution of the uh, numerals in the date. and. Uh, that's characteristic of uh, one of the counterfeit dies. So uh, we don't believe this coin is uh, genuine. Here's a well-known coin. Here's a 1916D dime. This one we're illustrating is a real gem. It's an incredibly well-struck 
high-grade coin worth quite a bit of money. Let's take a closer look at that mint mark on the back. You see the um, serifs are parallel to the E and 1. In other words, if you extend those two serifs straight out, you'll cut right through the center of the E there. Now there are four different mint mark positions on this, so once again you can't tell exclusively by the position of the mint mark. You've got to take a look a little closer, and uh, here's an altered date counterfeit. So let's take a look at what this looks like. You see that mint mark? We've extended those serifs out, and you see it's hitting the lower portion of the E. In other words, that mint mark is tilted very, very slightly counterclockwise. So that's going to put that alignment off just a bit. So that's one uh, indication that this coin may have an added mint mark. Here's another famous mercury dime. This is the famous overdate, the 1942 over 41. And you can see on the genuine example, it's very, very easy to see that date, uh, the 2 over the 1. But both of those numerals look to be about equal die depth. In other words, you know, I would, if I asked you if the 1 was over the 2 or the 2 was over the 1, the answer is really neither. They just sort of both look like they're there in the same place. On this counterfeit, however, take a close look at the date on this one. And that 2 is laying on top of the 1, okay, versus the equal die depth of the genuine example. So we, we take a close look at the date. And if it looks like uh, one of the numerals is on top of the other one, We've got a pretty uh, good indication that that coin is counterfeit. Here's another famous coin, a 1916 quarter. They struck very few of these, and they're quite valuable today. This is a genuine example, and uh, you can tell a good one by a couple of things. Even without a date, the lower left gown fold is flatter than on the 1917. So even if the date is worn away, which they often did, if you take a look at that lower gown, and it's got a sort of a flat bottom, sort of a wide flat bottom. There's a good chance it was a 1916 originally. Here's a 1917 quarter. Of course, this coin is genuine and a very, very nice example. Let's take a look at that lower gown. You see sort of that curve on that lower gown? It's, it's much rounder than on the uh, 1916. So that's an indication of how you uh, can often determine a genuine 1916 quarter. Here's a 1917 that's a struck counterfeit. Now, I don't know that it's an extremely valuable coin to counterfeit except an uncirculated, which this coin is. But uh, look at the lines in the pedestals look awfully deep, and they're just not real straight. They're sort of wavy and sort of hand-cut looking. And that's uh, one indication that this coin may be a counterfeit. Here's another overdate, uh, another 18 over 17. This was a quarter made in San Francisco. And this, of course, is a genuine example. And again, very, very high grade and consequently a quite an expensive coin that we're looking at here. Uh, notice the date and the die dot to the left of the right star. Here's this right lower right star. And to the left of it, you've got a little dot here in the, dot, in the uh, die. Uh, you want to take a look at that. That's a diagnostic on these coins. And here's a strut counterfeit. Once again, the whole coin looks somewhat cleaned. It looks rather glassy doesn't have any luster, almost looks fake, but once again you want to look real closely for that die dot and it's absolutely missing on this coin, which is a, makes it a dead giveaway, even though the whole coin itself doesn't really look uh, very good. It's another key date. This is a 1932 D quarter. This is a genuine example, once again a very high grade. Note on these, the mint mark seems to sort of sit in a well. In other words, it's not really below the surface, but it's sort of in a slightly depressed area. The serifs on the Ds extend left past the upright of the D, and um, both these mint marks are genuine, of course. Here's a counterfeit 32D. It has, of course, the light motto, which makes it look genuine. But on this coin, again, we want to take a close look at that mint mark. And the added mint mark, first off, it doesn't have much in the way of serifs, at least not as much as the real one. And it really seems to sit on top of the surface rather than kind of down in a well a little bit. They just sort of lay right on top of the surface. And there's a good reason for that because they were not struck into the coin, but they were added to the coin uh, rather well. I mean, it's a pretty good job, but it's going to sit totally on top of the surface. And that's one thing you need to look for. And a 32S quarter is similar. Again, you want to look for that light motto that's characteristic of a 1932 quarter. But check, the, again, the mint mark has those nice, crisp serifs, very even. 
Typical of all genuine S mint marks are those nice clean serifs. Here's a counterfeit uh, 32S, and we're showing a couple of fake mint marks. Both, uh, both are so somewhat mushy, not well formed. The top serifs on, on this one are, are extremely soft and mushy, and the bottom ones just aren't properly shaped. You see the lower serif is much larger than the upper serif. And once again, you need a lot of magnification to see these things up close, but you can see neither of these mint marks look like the real thing. And we'll wrap things up by taking a look at a 21 half dollar. This one, of course, uh, 21 is a much better date on uh, Walking Liberty halves. This is a genuine coin, and you want to focus here on the uh, beautiful uh, shape of the two on this. It has a slight curl with a hook at the end, and uh, you see how uh, nice and even shaped the uh, two is in that date. Here is an altered date, uh, started as a real coin, but somebody uh, took a probably a 1941 and uh, made it into a 1921. And let's take a close look at a couple of these fake twos. You see they're poorly shaped, particularly the one on the bottom. It sort of has that heavy top and that sort of skinny bottom. And uh, it just doesn't look, looks nothing like the other uh, numerals in the date. So uh, once again, uh, you want to take a good look at the two on 1921 halves to make sure they're properly shaped. Our purpose uh, was not to show you every possible counterfeit die or diagnostic. Of course, we've said before that would take uh, several years to do. But we've hopefully given you some insight into the appearance of struck fakes, telltale signs of mint marks, and uh, some of the appearance of altered dates. Uh, to become an expert detector is a life's work and an ongoing process. And uh, if you're interested in becoming a counterfeit detector, uh, we wish you luck. And uh, once again, it's very, very rewarding uh, once, you're, uh, once you're good at it.